Greetings from Milwaukee, Oregon, and the bomber gas. When you're driving on the old Pacific Coast Highway near Portland, don't panic at the sight of this low-flying B-17 bomber. It's just World War II veteran Art Lacey's idea for a good way to draw customers into his gas station. Art says that when people see the big bomber, they just jam on the brakes and head on in to fill up their tanks with gas. But what is the real secret to Art's success? There's an old proverb that my wife and I have both used over the years. If you stick and stay, you'll make it pay. And people like to go where other people is, not where they ain't. Greetings from St. Louis, Missouri, and Bigfoot. What dries down the road like a crab? Is more than 10 feet high and has 1,000 pound tires. Could it be the world's largest pickup truck? No, nope, I won't say it. I've never, I've never claimed to be the biggest or the best or, or the widest or the tallest or the shortest. It's just Bigfoot. Well, just mention the name Bigfoot and watch the crowds come running to see this monster crush a row of cars underneath its giant tires. Before we got out on the track, the crowd came over to stands and we took a half hour to get the uh, people back so we could drive over to cars. Uh, while we're experimenting with the vehicle here, we've done this three times now and it's still not to our satisfaction. We want to pull this car apart. We've got two Bigfoot, so we're going to use both of them. We've got a coming attraction in July in Bush Stadium where we're going to attempt this, so we're going to practice a few times to make sure it works out right. We're just hoping that the whole body will rip apart when we'll find out in a few minutes. Bigfoot, watch out. Greetings from Miami, Florida, and the Parrot Jungle. There are a whole lot of birds at this 1,300-acre feathered paradise, where a thousand exotic birds are just part of the daily show. Flamingos in formation. Performing parrots. savvy, rainbow-colored macaw. Okay, I want some here. I run a clean grade. <coughs> you got to just come up a little bit. You got your eye on it? You're not losing it now. Atta boy. Where is it? Well, you look at that. He beat me three times in a row. <laughs> Greetings from the world's largest. This is about big stuff. The kind of big stuff that happens only in America. When the settlers crossed the Great Plains in their covered wagons, there were no trailside signs and entertainment. Nowadays, our trails are covered with asphalt and built by giant bulldozers mileage is marked by the world's largest seahorse, shell, alligator, and snake. When you get hungry, you can stop for a belly-filling breakfast of Florida orange juice, a giant pot of Java Jive in Tacoma, Washington, some fresh milk at the Benoit Dairy in Spokane, and a plain donut in Los Angeles. How about an extra-large Coney Island hot dog with all the fixings for lunch? You could fill up your car with fine fossil fuel at the Big Dino Gas in Florida, or stop at Seattle's Boot and Hat Texaco station, where real roadside relief comes in the form of two Texas-sized cowboy boots. And if you think this is worth writing home about, you can always send a postcard from the world's smallest post office.
Greetings from Darwin, Minnesota, and the Curiosity Corner. This quiet corner of rural America contains a curious collection of objects which represent the personal treasures of Francis A. Johnson, a man who hates to see anything go to waste. I got over 400 different kinds of hammers, hatchets, and mallets. I got some 80 different kinds of sad irons. I got the dozens and dozens of gadgets that most people don't know what they're for. But the most curious thing in Mr. Johnson's collection is this, the world's largest ball of twine. The last time it left the yard, my ball of twine weighed the 21,140 pounds. It's, it's a little bit over 40 feet in circumference. It's been setting still now for, for four years. In 1958, a forklift truck loaded the ball of twine onto a truck headed to New York City for an appearance on the Gary Moore Show. I, I've also got another racket that I'm really proud of. I, I whittle these little wooden pliers and I sell them to kids, and I tell the kids that they should never in their life smoke a cigarette. They should whittle instead. That's what I do. So, if you're looking to stay healthy and happy, just put a little whittling and winding in your life. <laughs> Greetings from the Green Animals in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. This green menagerie is the lifelong work of George Mendonca, a man who makes a practice of fooling Mother Nature with an ancient art called topiary. Anything that's, that's trimmed from a living plant, regardless of the shape, it can be a, an animal, a bird, or just a, a column, anything that's hand-shaped would be uh, considered topiary. The only problem with these leafy beasts is they keep on growing. What would you call a dog that needs a haircut seven times a year? Well, I'd say he's all American. <laughs> uh, uh, he feeds on 5, 10, 10, the fertilizer. They, this one you have to be a little more careful because it starts to move on you. So, uh, but you just, just take it a little bit easier. Just one wrong move and the tail of this dog will be cut short. Some say they've traveled worldwide and uh, have never seen anything like we, we have here. Uh, and um, well, they, they hope that I'll live uh, to be a hundred and keep this thing going because it's so beautiful and it would be a shame to lose it. Fortunately for the dog and the rest of the green animals, George has a light touch. And as long as he's around, the only things these animals have to lose are their leaves. Greetings from the land of jackalopes. This sleepy Wyoming town is the self-proclaimed jackalope capital of the world. What you may ask is a jackalope? Well, they're big and furry, and they've got a set of antlers. This legendary creature is one of the West's most popular souvenirs and roadside attractions. If you want to catch a jackalope, well, you'll need to get a license. And then, at night, under the light of a full moon, you just sneak quietly up and shoot it. After you've bagged your trophy, just take it over to the Colbeck family, where Mama and Papa and the three kids will mount it up for you. after a little brushing, you'll be ready to take it home. This is what they look like when they're all done, and there's never two of them alike. Some will snare, some will smile, some just look at you, but you never want to trust, trust one of them, a jackalope, or the guy that owns one.
Contrary to what you might think, this exercise has nothing to do with rock and roll. Your feet are not made to wear big fat shoes like that. I do love you, Mummy. It's a dream from the planet Venus, alias eight-year-old Peter Hampson. A famous trio of Swiss hornblowers, grandfather, father and son, also add an authentic alpine touch to the proceedings. <laughs> 